All right, honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's time to get into the race. Okay. Now, what made you want to audition for Drag Race? It is a platform like no other. Yeah. And we don't really live in a world where um, there's an option to become a great success without a huge platform of any sort. Like, yeah, you can build yourself up, but so far, but at some point you need something else to take you further. And right now, and it's the best opportunity for drag queens. Now you auditioned eight times. Eight times. Eight times. I was just like, you gonna put me on this motherfucking show, bitch. Give Lady Red some support because <laughs> she's auditioned the same amount. Yeah. It must get frustrating to have to do it again. Do, do that damn again. scene from Mahogany again. Right. Do the closet <laughs> tour again. Do the like, oh God. <clears throat> but you know, I like look at those tapes and I got better every time mm. in a way that if I had gotten cast on the first one, I wouldn't want to show that to the world. Right. I think that I got, it, it happened in my life when it was supposed to. Right now, I'm more ready for this, these opportunities than I've ever been. And like, there was no reason to put Honey Davenport on Drag Race five years ago. Right. <laughs> like, so like, yeah, I've made eight tapes, but like, I could have just made the one that got me on because now I'm ready. What was the difference with that tape, do you think? I was honest. Mm. I was real, I was honest. And it was the first time I made a tape, uh, not drunk. Okay. Yeah. That Lady Red, take note. Stop getting wasted before you make those tapes. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was yeah, it was it was my first uh because so many parts of it are shot in a club or whatever and I would always be drinking and um you know, I I'm I'd smoke a lot of weed, so I wouldn't call myself a sober person. But <laughs> we're in California, that's legal. Um <laughs> but uh I do, I don't drink or anything like that anymore and it and, and Take, taking those things out of my life allowed me to get to where I needed to go. Sometimes it's not about what you need to accomplish, but more so that I need to let go of something. Because sometimes it's not about what you need to get, right. but what need you, you need to you know, let go of. Now you were having a really difficult time when you got the invitation to come compete. Oh yes. Tell me about that. Uh, I was homeless and I was in a very difficult place in my marriage and my friend Michael Perez, who became like a drag mother to me, was in a coma. Wow. <laughs> I was like, I was, I was just in like, a uh, like state of all the shock. Like I remember that, that time in my life just feeling like blurry. Like what the hell is going to happen next? Oh, Drag Race, got it. Wow. <laughs> like, you know, like, um, but yeah, I, I, I had just been homeless for about two months, and before I got the call for Drag Race, I had just got an apartment. So it was like, that week was like, yay, I'm gonna move into this place. Oh shit, yay, now I got a RuPaul's Drag Race. Things are really turning around. Um, then I got eliminated from Drag Race and then my roommates that I moved in with started doing heroin. So, <laughs> so then that was a struggle. This last year was really, uh, it was uh, putting me through the fire to like, you know, burn apart all of the pieces of me that didn't need to be there. Uh, Michelangelo, when he made David said, I didn't make uh, the perfect male. I took away the pieces that didn't belong there anymore. And this year has been a way of life just burning and stripping away all of the shit that didn't need to be a part of what Honey Davenport is. So wow. It was rough, but I'm pretty, like, like I said, I've always been really resilient and really strong in the face of any kind of adversity and uh, really committed to being authentic and who I am at all times. So I like, I manned up and got through it. I womaned up and got through it too. Yeah. <laughs> now what, what led to being homeless? I, I had a series of unfortunate events. So I lived in a really beautiful place in Inwood that like the, um, you know, shit goes down in New York and they changed the, the like luxury v laws, whatever. So my building could become a luxury building uh -huh. now. So <laughs> they gave my little black ass the boot. Um, <laughs> and, uh, then I got another apartment on the east side the next year, which I totally couldn't afford, but like the like literally the like club promoter who I was working with gave me money. It was like, girl, you need to get a house. Like you'll be fine. And so like I'm borrowing money from people and then I get this apartment, they got bed bugs five times. Whoa. Five times. So it was like a spiral. And then I and then I was like, still like, I'm gonna make it through. I got another apartment, like a sublet and uh, the guy I was subletting with, uh, my partner went and looked at the apartment before me, and he's a little tiny white guy. Um, and then when I came, when, when we moved in, it was the first time he met me, and he said things like, you know, um, 
uh, if my mom was to come visit, if you wouldn't be here, if that would be okay. And I was like trying to figure out why. This motherfucker was like low key racist as fuck. Um, he even like at one point got into an argument with uh, my husband uh, over something really stupid. And I was like, hey, you're not allowed to talk to him that way. Like that's mm. not what we do. Uh, he called the cops to me. And he said to the cops that I had um, attacked him. And the cops asked, how did he get attacked? And he said, he felt attacked. Uh, and the cop turned to me and said, this is racism. You need to get out of here. You need to get out of here now. And like, he was like, I'm gonna leave it at that. And so I had a friend who was like, come stay on my couch. And it just like, I ended up from one friend's couch to another friend's couch to another friend's couch. It just took a lot longer to bounce back from that situation because when you're a drag queen, none of your like none of your work is like you, you're making like five dollars for yeah. a show in New York City. Like it's not like you can up and just like get a new place, you know? Like oh, in New York City, it's almost impossible. It's impossible. So it was with really bad credit and really not mm. great income because you know they want a Broadway show for two cents in yeah. New York. Yeah, they um, do. Uh, I was not able to bounce back really quick, and it just it took a, a little while, and wow. and I ended up without a place to live for a while. So then you get the call to go to Drag Race. You borrow twenty thousand dollars. That's right, girl. Yeah. So to and to commission all the outfits for the competition, mm -hmm. what is it like when you get there? Nothing like what I expected because I had just come down off of all of that emotional like like trauma. I I didn't I wasn't even processing what was going on in my life. Like I I'm such a fighter that I was just like man up get through it, just get through it, just uh. right. But not like ever thinking about how it was making me feel, mm -hmm. how it was breaking on the inside, you know, like what, you know, wh wh who was causing me to be. Um, and then I, I started relying a lot on alcohol again. Um, During to, the competition? Um, I wasn't drinking. I had stopped drinking altogether before and then like started a little bit in the competition again. Mm -hmm. And then really heavily afterwards for a few months before I like stopped drinking at all. Um, yeah, it, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really processing my feelings. Um, and it's kind of hard to do a reality show where you're like, be real, tell me how you feel. And I'm like, I am not processing any of that right now. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I cannot, this is too hard. <laughs> um, and I tried to express that while there, but like it didn't necessarily fit into the storyline of what was going on in RuPaul's Drag Race. Mm. You know, a lot of, I say in my shows all the time, I talk mostly about dick and social justice, which are not two issues that they choose to, tackle on that show and they tackle so many it's fine you know but uh yeah so i it, it was just a i was like what the hell is going on here Right, well, you tried on to get on so many times you've done so many pageants yeah and then with all that emotional baggage you're then there and did you feel like you were out of body that you were just walking through it yeah it did because i always imagined when that call came that like i go to michael perez's house and we make me some dumb gowns well, he was in a coma. Wow. Um, so I had to borrow $20,000 <laughs> to get ready. Uh, and um, so I had like, I just, I just hadn't processed what I was, where I was before I got there. What, like I just was there with like fierce ideas of great drag, but like the allure of Honey Davenport, the beauty of what I created is, is this is just like, you know, goddess <laughs> but I'm but I'm honest and I'm and I'm real and I'm relatable and uh, I wasn't able to be those things while there because there was there, a wall had to go up to get through what I had to get through right now you said don't let ever let your insecurities become come between you and your dreams yeah was that were you saying that to yourself um absolutely um the whole time I was shooting drag race uh because of everything going on I was extremely insecure. I, I, I told Rue on the runway before I was eliminated in that episode, I was like, I cannot get out of my head. I, I cannot, like, I, I, that fringe look was one of the best fucking looks of my season. And I put it on and I felt like shit. Wow. Like I was convinced that I wasn't great. I just couldn't get past the fact that like, I didn't have a place to live five seconds ago or right. like that everything was going wrong. I couldn't, I couldn't get past it in my mind. Um, so, um, I felt like that was what was holding me back in the competition. I'm not bringing anything, I was bringing anything to the table. Yeah. You know? That's very difficult to have to 
you finally get there and then you, yeah. you're battling with your own demons and I not even able to enjoy it. I said that so many times. I was, I was like, I was like, y'all invited me to come this season and I really wish y'all had asked me next year. Right. Like, <laughs> I, I just kept saying, I was like, I was like, I'm so happy to be here, but also like, why this time? Like, no. <laughs> but and you don't say no when mama calls you. You know. No, you, you, it's like you never know when they're gonna ask again. Yeah. So you get eliminated too soon. How, you start drinking more. Mm -hmm. How do you bounce back? How do you, how do you take that year or whatever it is before it comes out to be ready to face the world, to face people's opinions, criticism, love, all of it? It's a lot to handle. Yeah, um, a couple of things. Uh, rest in peace to Jacqueline, who was an uh, amazing producer on the show. She uh, called me and she was like, "Your position in this competition, or how well you did." has nothing to do with how great you are. It has nothing to do with how great of a queen you are. Um, like, you can, you didn't do good, but okay. Um, and I've been working so hard to get to that place because I wanted to share my music, because I wanted to move to LA and become a movie star. And I, I didn't have to stop because I didn't do well. I wanted to compete on RuPaul's Drag Race so that I could get Honey Davenport and this idea that I had into the spotlight. Well, I did that. Even though I didn't do well on the show, I got what I wanted out of that. Yeah. Um, and I realized too, especially with the drinking, that I was doing that because I was trying to cope with the fact that I couldn't create the life that I wanted to create. I couldn't actually become a rock star, so I had to pretend to be like one. Mm. I had to like do all the things. I was like, yeah, I want to fuck twinks and drink alcohol every day. You know, like, <laughs> it's fair. Um, <laughs> uh, and not that I don't, Still fuck twinks every day, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I've really uh, traded in living like a rock star for creating a world that a lot rock star could live in. Right. You know. And so now, how uh, looking back on it, how are you feeling? Seems like you're doing great. You've, you're moving to LA. Bitch, I'm good. <laughs> you got your music out. Yeah. And what I'm the most proud of is that from this experience and from the experiences I had leading up to it, I've been able to create something that's so important for my community. I feel like there is not enough content being created for people of color that involves drag. And um, I wanna be very clear and say that this is not an attack on RuPaul's Drag Race or anything else. I don't feel like there is enough content, period, created for people of color. And it's not one sole entity's responsibility to do that. That being said, I do feel like it's partially mine to start picking up those ranks because ranks because I can do it. I am a creator, I am a producer. Um, and so I'm looking at my community who doesn't have the support it needs and I'm in a position to do that now. And so like that to me about this journey is the best thing. Yes, well we're excited to have you finally here in Hollywood with us, That's honey. That's right, it's about to get black as fuck. Yes, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well honey, you have turned it so fiercely today that you have snatched another trophy! Yes! 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 <laughs> I added to your collection yes! of many trophies. Work! I'm a champion. <laughs> yes, Brady honey. Lumo. And honey, we know you like sexy twinks. Yes. So, sweetie, we also got you a lap dance! Oh, yeah! Uh -huh. Adrian Yellow Black has got my That's color right. gold. That's right. That's right. Give it to a Randy. Give we're good. I would give it to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, honey, enjoy that. Lady Red, check us out with some black lady screaming. Mm. Oh, you, mama. Good. Yeah. you look great. I'm not mad at hey, you. Hey, Queen. <laughs> hey, Queen. Hey, Queen. Oh. Hey, Queen. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good job, Randy. I think she likes it. Oh, I loved it. Well, thank you to Lady Rand. Thank you to Randy Boo. But most importantly, thank you to Honey Davenport. <laughs> Honey's not going to be going anywhere, sweetie. She's going to stick around and play Look at Haw. So you're going to want to tune into that. But we want to thank all of you for watching. And we'll see you next time on Hey, hey Queen. Queen. Bye, baby. <laughs>